Good morning to you. Welcome to Glory to God Ministry Church Pavilion here in Pensacola, Florida. I pray all is well, and I pray that your day has been filled with the, with the grace and the mercies of God. And I greet you in the name of God, our Father, who's our wonderful counselor. He's our mighty God. And his sovereign rule and how that our God is the one that from everlasting to everlasting. He's the Alpha, he's the Omega, he's the beginning, he's the end. And I greet you in that name of God Almighty, who you and I have come to reverence and respect through his son, Jesus Christ, the honorable son, the son that honored and obeyed the will of his father. Jesus Christ, who died for the sins of the entire world, so that name I exalt and I lift at this time as we are reflecting and preparing for the celebration of the birth of Christ. And this is the time of the year that we do give our sentiments, we give praise, we give glory and honor and thanksgiving because of his birth. The Bible says unto us, a son is born and a child is given. And the purpose of this son and his child is to come into the world to redeem mankind. This child has a great responsibility. This child carries a burden of the father. So therefore, I say Merry Christmas to you. I pray the joy as you take the time to celebrate and enjoy the kindness of God, enjoy the goodness of God, of what you have in the day in which you live in, in this dispensation of time. I pray that you reflect on his acts of kindness as we are also in the, begin, in, in the time of closing out this year, that you're able to look back and see the grace of God. And I pray that there's a reverence and respect for our God, who's our Father, that we owe him at all times. I pray that your allegiance throughout the year has been that of an honorable person, an honorable child, as a church, as a people called out of the dark world into the marvelous light. So these sentiments at this time, as we celebrate life, life in eternity, life in time, and for those of us who have each other, I pray that you are taking the time to share and spread the love of Christ with your loved ones, your friends, your co-workers. And I pray that they have seen Christ in you and that you and I bear the image and the likeness and our very acts and our very deeds that is that of a church, a glorious church, a church that inspires and encourages others to know our Father in heaven. So blessings on you. I pray that you'll be safe as you're preparing to gather with your family. If you're preparing just to stay home, I encourage us to be safe with your family if you gather together. Yes, wear a mask. Do everything possible to be safe and to be careful. For those who are in this place where your heart is heavy because of death, our prayers are with you. I pray that you look to the hills and look to God and elevate your mind and say, Lord, help me, lead me and guide me. Because no one know what it's like except the one who's going through it. So our sensitivity to you is that we are praying for you and that you hold fast to God and change in hand. He will keep you and comfort you, for he's the God of all grace. So these words I speak as we prepare for our service in this day. Today I want to encourage us in what's coming for us at Glory to God Ministry. We will be doing our communion on the first Sunday, which is the third day of 2021, if the Lord's will. We'll be preparing for our communion, that we will take time to reflect and remember the Lord who suffered and died for our sins. And so prepare your house by taking the bread and taking the wine, what you will be taking the sacrament with, and prepare yourself for the day when we will do this. And we welcome you to come join us. And our own elder, 
Carol Allen and Betty Allen will be here performing our communion with us on live stream. And so prepare your heart. Pre prepare your heart. We're looking forward for this moment. It's special. It's sacred. And just, just do what you need to do to be ready for this moment in time. God bless you. Now today I'd like to build our hearts and minds coming from the gospel as we celebrate and look at Christ Jesus who was born a virgin birth. Through by a woman by the name of Mary, Jesus Christ was born. Mary found favor with God, as the angel said. As a handmaid, the grace of God came, the favor of God came, and God used her to bring forth our Lord and our Savior. We needed a Savior. We needed a Redeemer. We needed a Lamb. We needed a healer. We needed, and we yet need, a deliverer. So she was to bring forth the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our salvation. So today in the Gospel of John, I want to take a few minutes to look at Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 14, and look at what's here in verse 14, and then we'll come down to 16 and 17, and allow the Lord to use us and guide us through. It says in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, verse 16 and 17. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten of the Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So today I want to talk about grace and truth. Coming from our Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us in this writing of the gospel, and the word was made flesh, God's word, God's son, Mary's baby. That baby was the word, the word that God created to come down here and put on human flesh. It says, and the word was made flesh. The word was made human nature. The word put on the human cravings and appetites and passion. The word of God dressed in human nature came down and put it on so it could relate to you and to me. Because we was born in the flesh. So he was born in the flesh. Put on the flesh. The Bible says that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And he took upon the form of a servant. This young man, this baby, this Emmanuel, this lamb has put on flesh is what it noted to us. He had human cravings, human passions, human appetite. And at this time, he cannot operate in the supernatural. He cannot be equal with God. He cannot flee his temptation. He cannot walk away from the abuse. But he have come in the flesh and said, dwelt among us, lived among us, stirred, moved about among us. In this same earth realm, in the latitude and longitude of this world from the north, south, east, and west, he moved about as it says, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And just to take a note here, because Dealing with grace and truth, 
Grace and truth is the companion in which he's full of. But in this piece it says, he beheld, we beheld his glory. We beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. So at this time, among the human race, there's no other son that God have. There's no son besides this son who is now in flesh. Now he's walking around in human flesh. Cravings and appetites, passions and drives, feelings and emotions. And it's for a reason, it's for a purpose. He is coming in the glory of the Father. He's coming in the representation and honor in, of the Father to, re, to regard the Father's will, to respect the Father's desire. Though he have on flesh, but he has grace and truth. He has a divine favor upon his life. He have the truth, the facts. He have the duties in which he's to perform. He have the work of ministry. So therefore it says that he came, he says we beheld, we saw, we observed his glory. We observed his behavior. We, ob we observed and we saw him in the glory of the Father. The glory, it says, as the only begotten of the Father. That Christ came and with such regard, with such respect, he have on human nature, but he have such regard, such respect, because he's the model son. He's the son that is to fulfill the will of God. He's the son that is to do what God wants. So what he's coming in, it says he came in the flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, who's now coming in to give us the gift, a gift that no one can give us. He's coming, and he's in completion. He's in fullness of grace, divine favor, in the fullness of divine influence. influence. His life, he's submitted, he's committed, Though he's in the flesh, he is walking in the fullness of grace because he has a task, he has a job to do. Because God the Father is so madly in love with the world. John 3.16 said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So this son is coming now in what you and I are now experiencing. He's coming and he's full of grace and truth. Grace is God's unmerited favor, his loving kindness, God's goodness. Christ is coming with all of what God will have one to walk in because what is needed for you and me is grace. Grace is what man cannot, cannot afford. No one can give us grace but God. So God have a son that he's going to use. And this son has to come in and relate to you and relate to me. His son is to come in with a task. And his son is to move about in the glory, in the honor, in the respect of God, his father. He's an example. He's a model. He said, we beheld, we seen, we observed his behavior. We observed his acts. We observed him when he was feeding the hungry. We observed him. We beheld his glory. We observed him going away in the mountain to pray. We observed him. They said we beheld his glory. The honorable things that he did, we beheld his glory. The glory of as the only begotten son out of all the creation and all of mankind that's in the world at this point in time, God only have one son. The other son, the first son, is actually dead in trespasses and sin, who was called the first Adam. Now, God is coming because he doesn't give up on you. But he come in with his son dressed in the same flesh that the last son dressed himself in. But this son is coming with glory. Glory as the only begotten of the father. Glory 
and honor unto the Father. So he has a great task at hand, redeeming you and me, who are bound and lost and locked in a human nature that is animalistic. The grace that he's full of, the truth that he comes with. So here, grace and truth shows up into a generation, a human race of people. He's coming in to bring forth facts, duties, obligations, wills, purpose, and plan. So the grace that is to come from him and the influence that's going to come from him and the kindness that's going to come from him. The influence of insight and knowledge that's going to come from him with the companion of truth. So grace and truth is here together because God wouldn't send grace by itself because grace had to be, remain in a place of goodness. Grace had to remain in a place of God's kindness upon a son that would regard him in all times, at all times, in all hurts and all pains, in all rejection. The son has to remain in favor with God. So truth is his companion. Truth is the companion that operates with grace. And this truth has presented to him and to us the duty, the responsibility, the work, the will, the desire as to what God wants. So he has a task to do his Father's will. So this is why we say to you that it talks about him, that he's the only begotten of the Father. He's full of grace. He's in completion. He's in perfection. He's complete with grace, kindness, kindness, massive kindness, love, massive love, mercies, massive mercies that is needed for you and me. A dying world, sinners, people who are sick, people whose nature have made them violently mad and angry, hateful, trifling, ratchet. But he's here to represent the Father's heart because God is wanting to give a gift, a gift called life. So take notice that this son, this word was made flesh. And we beheld this word that was made flesh. We beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, the only son that God can trust, the only son that will give God the glory, the only son that will give God the respect, the only son that will hold God's will in high regard. Christ is that only son. That's why he's called the only begotten, the one been birthed by God. When he used his spirit to go into the womb of Mary and, and she conceived in her womb and brought forth his only begotten son. And I love how it is written by John. He says that he was a son. He says a son begotten of the father. The glory as the only. The glory as the only begotten son. Which is an example for us. And keep in mind what this son has to deliver he has to deliver grace accompanied with truth. This grace and truth has been given to us as a gift. And I, I want to say to us, Merry Christmas from our sovereign ruler, God our Father. Christmas has to do with the life of Christ. It has to do with what was given and what was received. His life is to be given. And he's to move about in the fullness of grace and truth with duties and responsibility, seeking and searching to save the human being, the lost sons, the sons that is lost through Adam, the first Adam, the human race that is in transgression. This son 
as we are preparing to celebrate his birth, as we reflect upon him as a son who's full of grace and truth. He's so full of what God has given, the love that is needed. For the people that he will search out, he have a measure of kindness that he will minister to the woman who's caught in the act of adultery. He have a measure of kindness that he's going to minister to the woman who had five husbands. He's full of grace and truth. And as he deal with each of these characters that are called out, as he deal with the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, he graced her because the law of Moses said, stone her. Stone her. Take her life. The penalty of adultery is death. Jesus Christ and his loving kindness and his tender mercy. He's acting as a defense attorney at a time she's caught in a criminal act. Truth is a companion that's here to know that truth must be ministered when one is actually guilty. Knowing that the individual do not deserve what he gives. He's about to give in her case. He's about to give her what she do not deserve and what she cannot afford. Grace is an act of kindness to you and to us. And Christ, who's put on this flesh and his compassion and the sympathy and the empathy and all that he's going to give out because this is God's will. That's why he's called the, the only begotten of the Father full of, full, uh, 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 he come with glory. He's a son of glory. He's a son of honor. He says, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. He's, he's very honorable with, with what God will. God willed that he wouldn't come into the world to beat down, to beat up, or destroy mankind. Mankind was already lost. Mankind is already in ruins. Mankind is already marred. He's here to save mankind from his own sickness, from his own crime, from his own lifestyle. So therefore, he came down in the glory of the only begotten of the Father with high regards to God's will, God's purpose, and God's plan. This grace, again, defines as simply the loving kindness of God, goodwill towards man, favor towards those who do not deserve favor. He has not come to destroy man, but he come in to save mankind and to liberate him from his issues and his powers of darkness. And to pass out this grace as a gift, Titus 2 and 11 said, the grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. The grace of God brought the truth, and as grace has shown up in our lives, grace has given us what we do not deserve and cannot afford. Only to help us. He came in a way that he could relate to us, but yet be honorable towards God, and yet speak the truth to mankind. So this woman who's caught in the act of adultery, he said to those who accused her, you without sin cast the first stone. He says simply, you without criminal activity of your own. You without sickness of your own. He said, you throw first. You pick up a, a stone and then you condemn her. And he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. And he wrote and he wrote and he allowed them to bring forth the law of Moses. He has a representative of grace. He was full of compassion the day that she needed it. He was full of loving kindness the day that she needed it. The merciful kindness of God was influencing a bad situation that she really didn't deserve. But it's what God wanted man to experience. 
his loving kindness. And this is what grace is. It is amazing. It's awesome. And as we say to you, Merry Christmas and your families, it has to do with Christ, Christ Christmas. Christmas is Christ. It's the Christ and the grace and the truth that gives us the latitude of the truth, the latitude of God's will, the latitude of God's purpose. And he stays so in line with the latitude from him to God that his purpose, as he put on this flesh and walk among us, is to be honorable, to be glorious, and to show forth the love of God in the world. And so the lady, as they thought about what they were to do according to Moses' law, because, see, Christ was doing a new thing. Grace had come on the scene. And so what grace has done, it is now fulfilling prophecy, not destroying the law of Moses, but fulfilling it, perfecting it, and completing it because God wanted to save mankind from the criminal act of Adam in the garden. Yes, this is no fault of our own. We all have come short because of one man, because of the human bloodline. So God in his love shows up with a gift called grace and a companion of that gift, which is truth. Truth was spoken that day, and truth helped her to see grace. When he said to her, where are thine accusers? And there was no one left to accuse because, you see, in that story, we see that all found that they had hands that wasn't clean. They found that they had acts and behaviors and conduct that they too was guilty of. All this has to do with a loving son, an honorable son, coming into the world to redeem mankind, to save us and to wash us, and to clean us. And he said to the woman, this was the truth, out the grace handled the case, loved her, willingly loved her, gave her an act of kindness. He said, go and sin no more. That's the truth. This is your duty. This is your responsibility from this day forward. You see what truth does? It gives us the facts. It gives us the duties and responsibility that God will have us to do now, the day you receive my grace, you're not to continue on in sin. Grace doesn't allow us to misbehave and cover us anyway. Grace expects us to embrace the truth, and you sh we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. So this is what he came in the full of grace. He came full, complete in grace and truth. I want to go down to verse 16. It says, and his fullness have all we receive, grace for grace. And that's what I want to say as we reflect on his life because he's this little, this word that's made flesh, he's now an adult man and, and now he's going to get you your Christmas gift. Yes. He's going to get you your Christmas gift. A gift called Christ. A gift called that you can receive. Notice what it said in verse 16. And of his fullness. And of his completion. And of his perfection. He says. Have all we received. Received that we have actually come to. In the possession of something. We're actually apprehending something. The fullness. Grace for grace. This is what he's given me. This is what he's given you. And for those who don't know what it's like, I want if you, if you're listening, he came in looking for people that he could give grace to. And he says grace for grace. Grace because of grace. You getting grace because of grace. That's all, that's the best it can be explained. You just getting grace for grace, because of grace, you get grace. You get the loving kindness of God because that's the loving kindness of God. You and I are getting 
the goodness of God because that's how he is. That's who he is. Once they, they said to Jesus, they said, good master. He said, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one. Because he knew that he came down in flesh and he would not give any glory to the flesh. And he said, if anyone is good, is my father in heaven because I'm coming in the fullness of his grace looking for you, searching for you. And what I have to give you is fullness, completion. And all of us have received grace for grace. Tonight, if you're listening, you're a sinner. The blood is running warm in your vein. You're clothing your right mind. Perhaps you're preparing for a party and a big a big get out and, and just party and enjoy yourself and dance the night away. Maybe you have plans to go out and do things that are certainly inappropriate, unbecoming, because the flesh is calling for it. But I want you to take time to listen tonight and to know that it might be your last party. It might be your last night. It may be the last time that you move about in this world. And before you walk away, I want you to take time to listen about the fullness of grace. You and I are getting grace because that's the goodness of his goodness. That's the kindness of his kindness. But he's given it to us in the fullness. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. But truth tells us that we have to have a regard and respect. Because grace will come with truth to help us to know there's going to be things that I require of you once I reveal myself to you because I really want to deliver each and every one of us, each and every one of you, from eternal damnation. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they took on a path, a beaten path that was never laid out for you and me. It's a beaten path that is for Satan and his angels. A beaten path that leads to destruction. Yes, Adam and Eve put us on a beaten path into death. But here, Christ is now giving us a beaten path through grace, God's loving kindness. God is telling everything to hold up, stay back. Let me preach, let me cry to them, let me call them, let me summon them, let me ask them, let me knock at their door. I will put on flesh and go down here, and I will walk in fullness. And when I find them in sin, I won't condemn them because they are condemned already. I will come down here and knock to offer you life. I come to give you life. This only son of God is now here to give us life and to give it more abundantly. He's here to give you life, an existing, a living with God, an eternity, world without end. So the grace of God is now appealing and crying out to all of us. The grace is giving grace for grace, goodness for goodness. Not your goodness, it's just God's goodness, and he's full of it. He's full of grace with the companion of truth. Truth is here. Truth is here to let us know what's right and what's wrong. And because you've been given what you don't deserve, certainly you will show an attitude of gratitude and appreciation. And so, Lord, I want to thank you for having mercy on a wretched sinner like me. See, God really wants us to have a Merry Christmas, not just in December, but Christmas in Christ is every day for the rest of my life and the rest of your life. Come in while you have time. Turn your heart back to God where grace is is pleading in your court, where truth is educating and enlightening and edifying and building the hearts and minds of people like you and me, who was born in sin. We was born with sickness. We was born with diseases. And our diseases wasn't physical diseases. They're all spiritual. So notice that he talks about him in the fullness Having all we receive, I certainly have received grace for grace. One kindness and another kindness. That's the fullness of God. Because God have this son 
to operate now on his right hand as the author and the finisher of our faith. As we are running home, we are encouraged to look to him who's going to measure to us more grace of strength, the grace of knowledge, the grace of understanding, the grace of comfort, as this world in which we are living in is perishing and passing away. So tonight and this day and the time that you and I are living in, I want to call you to embrace your Christmas. Embrace your Christmas in Christ. Receive the grace of God that he gave to us through Christ. Receive the grace for grace and let grace and truth become a companion in your life. Do not fail the grace. Do not frustrate the grace that's been given. It will help you to overcome. It will help you to be successful. This son it said, we beheld the glory. He, said, he says, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. He was so glorious in his conduct. He was so glorious in obeying God's word. He was so honorable. When he was hungry, he was glorious. Because he did not turn the bread, the stone into bread. He was such a glorious son. Even in his temptation. He walked in the glory of an honorable son. So in your birthday of receiving grace, it's going to help you to become even as he is. The Bible says, let this mind that was in Christ be also in you, in us. We are being called to a place of a higher learning and teaching. We've been called to a place to embrace grace and truth. They're friends. If I can say they're co-workers. Yes. When you hang out with Christ, you get a chance to meet grace and truth. And he's full of the grace. So take this as a gift and say, God, have mercy on me and come to me. Come into my heart and come into my mind. It says in verse 17, for the law was given by Moses. The law. There was a law that Moses received when he went into the mountain. And that law consists of God's commandments. And with that law, it was a law called the law of sin and death. If you violated the law, if you broke that law, if you stepped into transgression of that law, that law had a complete jurisdiction of of how to be, how to judge, how to deal with criminal behavior. That law of Moses gave legal right if you dishonored your mother, your father, to actually pluck your eye out, stone you. But grace have come in. Notice what he says. But on the other hand, I talked about Moses and the law. He says, but contrary, grace and truth came by another name. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. He's given us what we can't afford. He's given us what we do not deserve. Grace is a big package. It's the best thing that I've walked around as a gift in my heart and in my mind. Grace have graced me to know what I didn't know. It graced me with a wisdom and insight of how to conduct myself and how to walk in wholeness and soundness and perfection. It graced me how to behave as a husband. It graced me how to walk as a dear son of God. In that same glory, that same honor, that same respect, as my elder brother Christ, God only begotten son, who is the example and inspiration unto me. My life has been Christmas since I've met Christ. My world has been Christmas since I've met Christ. I pray that you can embrace what he done walking in the flesh but yet being honorable. 
I pray that you understand grace and truth are co-workers and companions working together to give us the love that God felt that we should have. Give us the kindness that God felt and feels that we should have. Give us a justice that we don't deserve. This is all God's thought and thinking. It is God's will that none perish, none be destroyed. And in search, grace came along, ministering, looking for those who was lost. I want us to look in Luke's gospel in chapter 1. And keep in mind, grace and truth are very helpful. They come only to help, not to hurt, but to help. The companions are working together to make sure I understand by knowledge the latitude and longitude of God, how, how wide he is and how, how, how high he is and how de deep he is. And in that, I've learned how to walk in the grace honorably, respectfully, not to disrespect the grace, not to disdain the grace, but only to honor the grace that have helped me and the truth that makes me free. So in the Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, we're going to go down to verse 79. And just to take note, Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 79. It talks about there was a young man by the name of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a man who was going to come and set forth the path of Emmanuel. John the Baptist was to come forth and set forth a beaten path, make straight the way of the Lord. Because He's coming in with grace. He's coming in with truth. And he's called the prophet of the highest. And he went and prepared the way to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the remission of sin. In verse 77, this is where it says this. He came to give knowledge, the truth of salvation. Because this is what grace has given us, a gift called salvation. So write down salvation as a gift. He says, unto his people for the remission, by the remission of their sins. Remission is to bring us into a healing state. Bring us into a state where we're no longer unhealthy, but healthy. No longer ratchet and wicked. Grace come in to keep giving you grace for grace. God's goodness and God's goodness and God's goodness. And this is how I made it every day with great respect to him because I learned to respect the grace and honor the grace. And I pray today that you can understand this is a call out to God's people and to those who are lost in sin at a time that God would be pleased to hear from you. He have the abundance of grace to give to each and every one of us. He come into the world to seek and save that which is lost. And through, 7, 8 says, and through the tender mercy of our God, that's grace. That's what John knew he had to tell the people as he prepared them to make the path straight, that he would come in talking about the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. For what reason? To give light to them that sit in darkness. Grace is looking and shining forth and appealing Grace has appeared to all men. It's come out and, lit and it lightened the path and found you in darkness, found me in darkness. Notice, to give light to them that sit in darkness. I think about my position when Jesus found me. He found me in darkness. He found me in ratchetness. He found me in wickedness. He found me. The light found me. He shined in the darkness, and I comprehended the light. That's what grace did. He didn't find me in darkness and stone me. He came. He says to give light, to release light to them that set in darkness and in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. 
So Merry Christmas to you if you're in darkness tonight, today, tomorrow, 2020. Merry Christmas, Merry Christ to you. A joyous Savior has come. He's come in to take your punishment and give you what you don't deserve. God has graced him in the fullness. And in this, I love the fact that grace is going to give to them that are in darkness, whose eyes has been blinded. He's going to give them light so they can see. Those who are in the shadows of death, where because of sin, death is about to take you out. And even some of us, we can see death is even on you. Death is a companion of sin. That's what death is. Death is a companion of sin because the Bible said the wages of sin is death. They are companions. Just like grace and truth is companion, sin and death is companion. When sin gets finished with you, it will bring forth death. So what grace has done, it went moving about the streets of Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Judea, going along the seacoast of Galilee, searching for those like you and me, those who are in sin, because it is the Father will that none perish. He found those who was adulterous, setting in the shadows of death, liars and murderers, setting in the shadows of death along the seacoast of Galilee in Judea. Lives are in bondage, lives are in ruin. But God show up as the word dressed in the flesh. In the natural man, he, he's walking around like a natural man, relating to people, but he's full of grace and truth. And he's only giving you and I grace for grace. You're not getting grace and punishment. You keep getting goodness and goodness and goodness. See, grace and grace Grace have to do with ongoing grace that's unfailing. See, grace never fails us, we fail grace. We fail grace when we fail to heed the truth. You fail grace when, you, when we refuse to honor grace, grace companion. Remember I said grace has a companion called truth. Now we fail grace, grace don't fail us, we fail grace when we reject the truth. So he's searching for everyone because he comes for those of us who are sick. And as we close, I want us to stop by and look as he looked to find people like you and me. The kingdom of God is made of people who came in sick, ratchet, dirty, foul, lost in sin. But I love the fact that grace came along with a great companion called truth. And truth is in our life only to make us free. Free from the wretched human nature. Let's look with me in the Gospel, Luke chapter 5, verse 31. Luke 5 and 31. Grace and truth, they are partners. They are companions, like sin and death. Notice, Jesus is actually communicating and eating with scribes and Pharisees, I'm sorry, with the scribes and Pharisees, and they have a problem because he's hanging out with sinners. Let's do actually uh, verse 29. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. But the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? See, grace and truth came for people who are sinners people who's in the world of the darkness. Notice what Jesus said. He says, and Jesus answered, says unto them, truth begin to speak. They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. See, I'm here, and I'm full of grace. I'm ready to give grace for grace. I'm here in the fullness and honor as a son to his father to seek and save that which is lost. See, this is where he came in to give People like you, if you are an adulterer, you're sick. If you are a homosexual, you're sick. 
mal mal malice, strife in your heart, enough to hurt somebody, you're sick. This is the nature of the flesh. I remember being sick, but I'm saying this because we're in a time when grace is only want to give you grace. And you should come now while grace is giving out Christmas, while grace is giving out Christ, while grace is giving out fullness. Grace is giving out what you need, but you don't deserve it. It's giving us what we need. We need love and compassion. So God said unto me, come now while you can, and I'll give you rest. So the publicans and the sinners are people who are considered to be sick. He says, they that are whole, those that are healthy, need not a physician. You don't need a doctor, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So this day, meet someone, tell someone about the gift of grace, the gift that Christ has given Give Christ, and Christ will give grace. Tell your loved one, accept Christ, and Christ will give you what you don't deserve and what you cannot afford. He will give you kindness and kindness and kindness and mercies and mercies and goodwill towards man on earth. He's so full of the grace that he takes your punishment. He takes the beating. Grace and truth are running over making sure that he's been graced with the strength to take the spit and the beating and the slapping and the plucking of his beard. I'm here to look for sinners. I'm here to save that which is lost. I'm here to help people who won't help. Christmas is about you accepting Christ today. Christmas is about you repenting of your sin. Christmas is about you not sinning and sinning because grace have you covered. Christmas is about coming to regard and respect the glory of God as has been given to you from God's dear son who died, who was beaten for you and for me. So God houses is set up. Our father's houses is set up to call you unto God. All of us who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So embrace grace and truth. They're the best friend and companion you can hang out with. And grace will be sufficient to keep you and to guide you. Grace will appear to you and tell you to deny that which is ungodly. That's truth. So today, as you prepare to celebrate this Christmas, let's walk in the grace of Christ. Let us operate in the fullness and the cup running over with compassion and love. Let us learn from Christ. For this cause came I into the world, he said. Grace, grace unto you. Mercies be unto you. At this time that God will be pleased to hear from all of us. Turn from our wicked ways. Let him heal you. He's the physician that graces you with a healing of the heart, the soul, and the mind. He is the great physician that is searching for those of us who are sick and trespasses in sin. And all he wants to shout to you is grace unto you. Come and let me give you what you don't deserve and what you can't afford. So the blood is running warm in our vein. You want to be in a place in eternity that God has prepared for people who love him. There is a new heaven coming. There's a new earth coming. There's a new city called the Holy Jerusalem. It's going to come down from God to you. In this city, God will come and dwell, and he's going to be your God, and you're going to be his people. Come in while grace is on the case. Come in while mercy is in the seat. Come in. Come in. Dear friends, dear brothers, dear sisters, sinners, transgressors, all of us, come to God's hospital and get your healing. God bless you and God keep you. And may you have a merry, merry Christmas. May you have a joyous Christmas with Christ our Lord. No, it's not Santa Claus. Santa Claus is not real. 
It's Jesus that gives the gift. It's Jesus that gives the gift that's of great value. So church, let us cry out and let them know that Christ has come in the fullness. He's come giving grace for grace. Because of grace, he gives grace. God bless you. God keep you in this day and in this night. Blessing.